What's up guys, Jordan from Precondo here. Uh, again today with another video. We are back from the holidays. I'm gonna be pumping out two of these a week at least, if not more, so subscribe, stay tuned. Today we're talking about a post that I've seen a couple times in the Toronto Housing Market Bubble Group, uh, which is a Facebook group I'm a part of because I think it's important to look at not just the bullish case, but obviously you wanna be in tune with the bearish thesis and every once in a while there's some really intelligent posts in there. Most of the time it's just drivel and jealousy to be honest. However, every once in a while there's a really good bearish case and I like to make sure I'm not just getting one side of the argument. So this particular property has been posted two or three times in just the last two months. So I wanna talk about it here. Uh, it's 339 Maple Leaf Drive. This is the clip. This is the, uh, the little image they share. So you can see that the homeowners bought it in the summer for 1.95 million and then they sold it. Um, they sold it for five months, four months later, they sold it for 1.6 million. So at first glance, it looks like these homeowners lost um, you know, uh, $350,000 in a very short period of time. Um, as is typical with the housing bears, nobody bothered to do five minutes, 30 seconds of research. So I'm going to do that with you today and show you that not only did these guys, this is probably the worst example to use for, uh, you know, a bearish thesis in the housing market. So I've pulled up the house Sigma listing here. You can see that the most recent sale was in October of 2020 for, um, 1.6 million and it was purchased just four months prior for 1.95 million. Now, what I want to show you is the previous listing. And, and what I'm so, so first thing I wanna show you is when you look at it at the map here, on the House Sigma map, you see that most of the homes in this neighborhood um, are, are all 50 and 40 foot lots. You see the narrow, the narrowness of the lots here, they back onto a nice little, uh, little park here, little ravine. And uh, this home is on a particularly wide, um, Wide lots. That's the first thing I noticed when I when I pulled this out. I was like, "There's no way this, you know, it's a relatively bullish market right now. There's no way that these people lost three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Who buys a one point nine five million dollar home and then sells it for three hundred fifty thousand dollars loss four months later? Very, very few people, if any. Um, you'd have to be in a pretty tight situation to do that. Uh, so, so the first thing I noticed is the lot, right? So it says the lot on this most recent sale for one point six million is 50 foot wide. Now, if you go to the previous listing for 1.95, you'll notice the lot is 100 foot wide. So what happened here? Well, uh, the sellers obviously, or the purchasers obviously split the lot. And if you go to the description from the original listing, the one that sold for 1.95 million back in May, you will see that it says, allows for perfect opportunity to sever and build a second home on a 50 by 350 43 foot lot which is exactly what the sellers did so these guys actually made money or are going to make money so let's talk about exactly how much money they made um, and uh, and what that looks like so if you look here you can see that it, you can see it's available so here's the 50 foot lot 1.259 million with just the uh, the garage on it, right? So you can see what the, what they did is they bought this this home on the 50, 100 foot lot for 1.95. They then severed the lot. They have since sold uh, the lot, the 50 foot lot with the home on it. They sold that for 1.6 million, and now they've listed the other lot for 1.259 million. Uh, a little bit of quick research tells me that they're unlikely to get 1.259, although they do back on the park. At absolute minimum, these guys are gonna get 1.1, probably closer to 1.2, but let's uh, let's be conservative and just talk about how much money these guys made here on this property. All right, so quick numbers on this property here, just to kind of show you how profitable this, this may have been or might be for the sellers. Uh, let's just say for argument's sake, that these guys got a mortgage, okay? In order to get a mortgage on a property over a million, you gotta have 20% down, so that's $390,000. So they're in this property for at least 390. This is the original property, and then they uh, then they split up into two lots. So let's go lot one, lot two. Lot one we know already sold for 1.6 million, okay? And then lot two, again, we'll play super conservative. I'm gonna say they're gonna sell it for 1.1. They're more likely gonna get 1.15 to 1.2. Um, this is you know, the actual probably value of the lot. Jesus, sorry guys, holidays here. Okay, so total sales, total sales value, let's say is, 
this guy plus this, this guy. Okay, total sales is that. So there's a delta here of uh, minus the original, right? Okay, but there's obviously costs going into this property. So the first thing is when they purchased the property at 1.95 million, they would have paid land transfer tax. It would be a little bit less than 4% of the total value. Uh, but just to make, again, quick numbers here, we're going to say they paid that. It's probably closer to like 72 or something, 73. We'll just say 70, uh, 78. We're going to need lawyers on the purchase, and then we're going to need lawyers on both sales. So I'm going to say legal. Uh, we're going to say 4,000 in legal fees here. Um, and then uh, commission. So we're going to assume that they paid, but let's just assume that they had to pay full commission on the sale of both properties, which is 5% in Toronto. Uh, and then obviously they have to pay the city of Toronto for the lot severance. Usually works out somewhere around $100,000. Can be less, can be a little bit more. $100,000 is a good baseline. And this, the turnaround on this was pretty quick. Uh, so I'm gonna assume 100 grand on that. Um, so let's go total here. Okay, so those are their total costs, right? So the net on that is $433,000. So they put in 390,000. Oh, you know what? We could actually get a little bit more complicated because if they're putting in 390, this could have been an all cash deal. It's not unlikely uh, if these guys flip homes a lot, it could have been an all cash deal. But assuming it wasn't and they levered up a bit, we could say uh, six months of mortgage, six months of taxes, uh, taxes on this particular property. Let's pull up the taxes. Tax seventy eight nine hundred a year, and then and then mortgage. We're gonna say probably about uh, fifty seven fifty again. Just quick numbers here. If not, don't don't take everything. And so total um, would be that, right? So okay. So there's your actual net three hundred and ninety four thousand five hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and then of course capital gains which uh, let's assume that these guys are, you know, high income, it should be that. So profit once all is said and done is a cool $295,912.50, right? Again, rough numbers. If they sell for closer to 1.2, which I think is possible, then they're going to net closer to 390,000. So they put in three, if they levered up, they got a mortgage, they put in $390,000 and they doubled it essentially or close to double it in a six month time period. Now, one disclosure I wanna say here is there is risk. There was risk that they didn't get the severance. There's, there's, there's risk in this in this deal. Um, this isn't, uh, but, but this is a pretty good example of a unicorn deal. They didn't do any work. They didn't have to build anything. Um, they got the severance in a timely fashion. It only took a six month turnaround and they're gonna walk away doubling their money in six months. So this is a, a fantastic deal for those for those purchasers. Um, this is a really good property to do this on and a really good time of year. People were looking for detached homes. Um, I also think it's uh, pretty awesome that we live in a city where you can net, you know, you can find these deals and, and net a ton of money um, on uh, on essentially adding to the housing supply. So what's great about this is, you know, this, this um, these flippers, you could call them, uh, which a lot of people has a negative connotation. A lot of people don't like flippers. They think they drive the, you know, the prices of the housing up. But what, what this flipper has actually done is they've created two, two dwellings eventually, because that home, that second lot will get built on. So they've taken what was essentially before a single family residential. They've, they've created two single family residentials. Um, so they've added to the housing supply. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is a good, uh, it's a good example of, um, careful where you get your real estate advice from, right? At first glance, it looks like these people lost $350,000 on a property when in reality, they might, they made $350,000 on a property in a six month period of time after paying taxes, fees, commissions, everything. Uh, so this was sort of a slam, uh, slam dunk deal. Uh, that's it guys, like I said, two pieces of content a week. So if you like this, this type of content, do me a favor, uh, subscribe, like, leave the comments below, and I will see you next time.